hate those guys. Call the Mike Slocum Law Firm on the Hurt Line right now. Tonight, several developing stories. The Dow plunging, dropping more than 1,500 points for a time, then closing down 1,100 points. The biggest point drop ever. What's behind it? Also breaking why the president is calling some Democrats treasonous. And late today, the House Intelligence Committee debating whether to vote to release the Democratic rebuttal to that secret memo pushed by the president. And tonight, we ask the president, will you sign off on this memo, too? The deadly flu tonight, 53 pediatric deaths now blamed on the virus. Two cases in New York City, an eight-year-old girl among them. And if you've already had the flu, should you still get a flu shot? The deadly Amtrak crash colliding with a freight train, two killed, more than 100 hurt. How was the switch set in the wrong position? And what we just learned about the engineer. The winter storm, the 50-car pile of snow and ice moving from Chicago to the Northeast. The police news conference today, witnesses coming forward with details in the death of actress Natalie Wood. And fly, Eagles fly, back home in Philadelphia tonight, celebrating their hero quarterback. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here to start another week and a volatile and tense start to the week on Wall Street today. We witnessed the largest one-day point drop in history. With a strong economy and an improving jobs picture, how do you explain this? Just after 3 o'clock this afternoon, the loss is adding up at one point, plunging more than 1,500 points, then recovering a bit, closing at 24,345, down more than 1,100 points to end the day. The president often cites the Dow and the markets as proof that his policies are working. So what the White House is saying tonight, as everyday investors and baby boomers, retirees want to know, is this temporary and what's driving the jitters? ABC's chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, leading us off. You could see it in their faces. Anxious traders on Wall Street as the Dow plummeted more than 1,500 points before recovering somewhat, still ending the day down 1,175 points, the biggest one-day point drop in history. It came just as the president was praising the strength of the American economy and jobs in Ohio. Give something very big back, and that's tax cuts. While cable news showed the Dow's precipitous drop in the corner of the screen. President Trump has repeatedly touted the market's gains as proof his policies are working. Many economists say the tax cuts and deregulation have helped fuel the Dow. I told you the stock market is hitting one all-time record after another. The stock market is shattering one record after another. The stock market smashes one record high after another. The Dow is up 21% in just the last year. But with such dramatic climbs can come volatility. And while job gains and wage increases are positive news for workers, they are also a signal for the Federal Reserve to hike interest rates, leading investors to fear a correction. When the market pulls back, and particularly as, as sharply as we've seen in recent days, there's this natural tendency to think, oh no, what's wrong? There's nothing wrong. Uh, what you're seeing is just some profit taking because of the fact that interest rates are going up. Rebecca Jarvis with us here on the set tonight. And Rebecca, you pointed out there, we know the president pays very close attention to the markets. He often talks about them. But put this in perspective, have we heard from the president yet from the White House? Uh, we've yet to hear from President Trump today, David. He's yet to weigh in on the market today. White House Press Secretary Sari Sanders weighed in and said that the economy in a statement is exceptionally strong, pointing to the low unemployment figures, rising wages, and the tax cuts. The economists you talked to today said the, the fundamentals are strong, in fact, and we've seen it on Wall Street. So how do we, how do we put this in perspective for a retired a baby boomer at home and looking at their 401k. When you think about your nest egg, David, if you had put $1,000 into the market one year ago, you would have made, as of today, $200 on top of that. That money would be safe as of today, even in spite of today's losses. All right. We'll see how it goes tomorrow yes. on the markets. Obviously, Rebecca Jarvis here leading us off. Thank you. And as the stock market was falling, President Trump traveled to Cincinnati today to promote the tax cuts and American jobs. He also took aim calling out Democrats as, quote, treasonous for not standing during the State of the Union speech. And after that memo from congressional Republicans a short time ago, the House Intelligence Committee voting to release the Democrats' response. Will the president sign off on that? We ask him today, and here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. Less than a week after calling for national unity in his State of the Union, the president today attacked Democrats who did not applaud, branding their behavior un-American and maybe even worse. They were like death. 
and un-American. Un-American. Somebody said treasonous. I mean, yeah, I guess why not? You know. Can we call that treason? Why not? In Ohio today and in classic Trump form, the president bragged about the economy. He bragged about the tax cut. He even bragged about his big win in Ohio. And then he said he's not one to brag. I am non-braggadocious. In a cryptic aside, the president seemed to allude to the Republican Intelligence Committee memo, which claimed to show anti-Trump bias in the Justice Department. Oh, but did we catch them in the act or what? You know what I'm talking Oh, did we catch them in the act? They are very embarrassed. They never thought they were going to get caught. We caught them. They're like the great sleuth. Over the weekend, he tweeted, this memo totally vindicates Trump in the Russia probe. But a top Republican on the Intelligence Committee disagrees. I actually don't think it has any impact on the Russia probe. The FBI has challenged the memo's accuracy, and the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee calls it pure politics. The interest was a political hit job on the FBI in the service of the president. Today on Twitter, the president hit back, tweeting, little Adam Schiff is one of the biggest liars and leakers in Washington, must be stopped. Schiff responded, instead of tweeting false smears, the American people would appreciate it if you turned off the TV and helped solve the funding crisis, protected dreamers, or really anything else. The president wanted to release the Republican memo even before reading it. Let's release the memo. Oh, yeah, oh, don't worry. 100%. But Democrats have prepared a rebuttal memo, the committee voting tonight to make it public. Do you have any problem with the Democratic memo being released, Mr. President? Should no answer. No answer there. John Carl with us live tonight from the White House. And, John, we know the House Intelligence Committee just now voting to release the Democratic rebuttal to that controversial Republican memo. Now President Trump has to decide whether or not to authorize that release. What are you hearing tonight? And David, while the president did not answer my question today, White House officials tell me that he is inclined to authorize the release of the memo. And it's important to point out the committee's vote today was unanimous. Every Democrat and every Republican on that committee voting to make that memo public. All right, John Carl live at the White House to start out a week. John, thank you. Next tonight, the deadly flu epidemic, the peak of this season not yet in sight. Now some experts say it could last into May. 42 states now reporting high flu activity. The state's right there in red, and it's most of the country, as you can see. 53 children have died so far this season, and we know of two more right here in New York City in just the last week. And if you've had the flu already, this question tonight, should you still get the flu shot? Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis. Tonight, ERs across the country are on overload with a record number of patients. Nearly 15,000 people hospitalized so far this flu season at this New Jersey hospital. You have some patients in some of these rooms, but you're doubling up, is that right? Yes, so in pediatrics in particular, we had to put two beds in each room just to be able to handle the sheer volume. Already 53 children have died across the country from flu-related illness. Now another possible young victim, seven-year-old Savannah Jesse of Indiana, diagnosed with the flu, strep throat, and scarlet fever. After they left the hospital, he took her home, put her in bed, and then found her Friday morning. Doctors say the best defense is still a flu shot. The vaccine protects against multiple types of flu, and many different strains are still circulating. Even if you already had the flu this season but didn't get vaccinated, doctors recommend getting a flu shot once you're better. The CDC also recommends that seniors get a pneumococcal vaccine to protect against a deadly complication. If you're 65 or older, we also recommend getting vaccinated against pneumonia. David, the doctors that we're talking to say that it's typical for flu season to go until Easter, but the CDC is now saying it could last until May. David. Lindsay Davis in Patterson, New Jersey. Lindsay, thank you. Next to the deadly Amtrak crash and what we have just learned tonight about the engineer a short time ago, Two dead, eight people still hospitalized after that crash in South Carolina. A passenger train slamming into a parked freight train in the middle of the night, sending passengers flying. ABC senior transportation correspondent David Curley is on the scene for us tonight. Federal investigators say tonight the Amtrak engineer, apparently realizing a switch was set wrong, hit the brakes, but he could not stop this head-on collision. There was bodies everywhere. The seats came up off the floor. The rail cars and the Amtrak engine are now being removed, but investigators are more interested in the switch on the rail line just a couple of hundred yards back up the track. Rail crews for freight company CSX apparently didn't follow policy, leaving the switch in the wrong position. 
Late Saturday or early Sunday, CSX turned that switch and moved one of its freight trains from the main line to a siding. But that switch was not flipped back to the main line. And when Amtrak 91 arrived heading south to Miami, it was diverted onto the same side track and in less than 700 feet slammed into the park freight train at more than 50 miles an hour. That switch should have been flipped back to the main line to save this Amtrak train. Well, I'll put it this way. That switch should have been lined so that that Amtrak could have continued southbound as planned. Yet another awful scene involving an Amtrak train. David Curley with us from near the crash scene tonight. And David, we've just learned about another problem that night that the track's signaling system, essentially a system of traffic lights, was turned off. Yes, in a tragic irony, CSX actually took the system down to install the mandated positive train control, the safety system that if it had been working, David, would have prevented this crash. All right, David Curley on the scene for us. David, thanks as always. We're also following a storm system tonight moving across the country. And look at these pictures of FedEx truck sliced in half on an icy highway in Nebraska. Heavy snow in Iowa causing a massive pileup over the weekend. That was on I-35. Some 50 vehicles involved. Half a dozen people critically injured. Next, that new storm taking shape, sweeping all the way to the northeast as it comes across the country. So let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z, tracking it out for us. Ginger, uh, hey. hey there, David. The one in Iowa here, four to six inches fell, and that's a lot for this area. Des Moines hasn't seen that in more than two years, that type of snow. Now it's tracking along Interstate 80, I-74 near Peoria there in Illinois. But that next system that you were mentioning, David, this one going to bring heavy rain. I'm talking two to three inches of rain to a drought stricken south east but it's that northern part where we see the snow and ice start Wednesday through Wednesday night that's when I think I-95 needs to pay attention in that evening commute because snow six to ten inches for places like Bradford Pennsylvania through say Greenville Maine and then ice on top of it from Tulsa to Jefferson New Jersey all right tracking it through Wednesday there Ginger thank you we turn next here to new questions tonight about your money how the Pentagon is keeping track of hundreds of millions in spending an independent audit finding that the Pentagon's accounting failed to provide a paper trail for hundreds of millions of dollars, your taxpayer dollars, in construction projects. And it comes as President Trump is proposing a massive increase in the military budget. ABC's senior congressional correspondent Mary Bruce tracking your money tonight. Tonight, questions about how the Pentagon is keeping track of hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars. Nine supply chains, 2,300 weapon systems, and about 5 million items. At issue, expense reports for construction projects. $384 million spent without the proper receipts. Another $465 million put in the wrong column, labeled as ongoing projects that had actually been completed. The Defense Logistics Agency admits their failure to track funding, but says Says none of the money is actually missing or misspent. The president today went after Democrats over military funding. They don't want to give the money to the military where we need it. You know, without the military, we might not be here. So let's get to Mary Bruce. She's live up in the Hill tonight. And Mary, you're getting reaction from your sources from both sides of the aisle tonight. David, a Democratic senator today called these revelations completely unacceptable while a top Republican believes, quote, keeping track of people's money may not be in the Pentagon's DNA. David. Mary, thank you. To other news and next disgrace gymnastic sports uh, physician Larry Nasser sentenced to 40 to 125 years after pleading guilty to sexual abuse charges in another court. And tonight, new questions about whether Nasser could have been stopped earlier. The New York Times saying Nasser abused at least 40 more patients after the FBI was first told about allegations against him in July of 2015, the FBI says it worked with law enforcement partners to bring charges against Nasser. Overseas tonight, the U.S.-led coalition announcing a shift of operations in Iraq, changing its combat enabling mission to one of sustaining the gains achieved against ISIS. 5,600 U.S. troops now in Iraq expected to remain to advise the Iraqi military with policing, border patrol, and troop training. Back here at home tonight, a Super Bowl for the history books. What a game last night, a thrilling upset victory. The underdog Philadelphia Eagles, underdogs no longer, defeating the veteran champs, the New England Patriots. ABC's Gio Benitez in Philadelphia tonight where the celebrations haven't stopped. Tonight, the Eagles landing with fans lining the airport fences on top of cars, celebrating their team and the improbable story of Nick Foles, the once discarded backup quarterback who briefly considered retiring, now reflecting on his earlier struggles. I wouldn't be up here if I hadn't fallen thousands of times. Foles thrust into the...